Ready? Alright, yep, heels on the floor and full power. Follow it is set. Good. Engine is gauges are checked. Good. Airspeed is live. Good. There's we your have report. On speed. Good. And we have our rotate speed right here. There you go, good job. Pitch forward a little bit, forward a little bit, good. And if you can't see forward, yeah. make sure you're using the Lindbergh reference over there. Hello aviators, my name is Jason Miller, a full-time career flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. One of the things that's been happening to me a lot lately is that I'm getting calls from people that are either in training or certificated pilots and they want to fly out to see me or if they live here they want to go flying and they want me to give them an assessment of what their flying skills are like, what I think about it, uh, and you know, if they're working in training, you know, how their training is progressing. So meet Prakash. He is a 30 hour pre-solo student. He's working on landings and he feels like he should be further along than he is. Now, I don't know Prakash very well, so we get right to work in the traffic pattern. I need to see if he's flying consistent patterns, if the shape of the pattern is good, uh, if he's using trim, if he's using rudder, if his power settings are consistent, and if he's able to hold an aiming point. Again, I'm gonna give you the marker. Yep. First thing I'm gonna do here is just get set up on final, and I wanna talk to you about the aiming point. Okay. All right, we're gonna look and see if we can identify the aiming point on landing. Once you identify it, I want you to circle it, and then we're going to use pitch and power to hold the airspeed I give you and hold the aiming point where it is. Okay. All right, so inside the white arc, flaps 20. We want 65 on final in this airplane, so. Um, for your ultimate knowledge, too, this is the reason why I prefer power off approaches, is that <clears throat> if you and I had an engine failure here, we'd probably be on that little dirt strip right there if we yep. were lucky. Um, so at the end of the day, once you get good at this, that's my argument for power off being the default more than anything else is that it keeps you in a gliding position to the runway. <clears throat> okay, so let's see if we can figure out. I'm gonna aim for something and I want you to try to see it. Um, we'll make it pretty straightforward here. I'll tell you it's the piano keys that I'm trying to aim for. Okay. Will you circle those in your view, please? Now before this flight, Prakash told me that he wanted to work on these approaches with power on. Uh, he must have seen on, the, on YouTube somewhere that I do power off approaches very often. So he asked me to do these power on, which I understand. Uh, it gives you a bigger pattern, which gives you more time. The problem is most people, I would say 90% of people don't set power consistently. So it ends up being kind of a moving variable. And when I ask Prakash where he sets the power in his airplane, he tells me 1300 RPM. What power setting do you use in your in your uh, or your uh, Cherokee? 1300 RPM. 13, okay. But you can see here that it's actually set at 1850. Now, I'm not picking on Prakash because 90% of people have this problem. I mean, it's kind of difficult. You have to be pretty diligent about setting the power consistently because it does change as you slow down in a fixed pitch propeller. So just be sure if you're not practicing power off approaches, uh, then you absolutely have to be sure that your power is set the same place every time. Or like I said, it's going to be a variable that's constantly moving and it'll make landings much harder for you to figure out. Okay, so he's doing a pretty good job of holding the aiming point. Uh, but as we're going around the pattern, I'm noticing that there are a lot of, you know, sort of pilot induced oscillations, which is typically a sign of somebody who's not comfortable controlling the airplane. You know, what people do is they'll kind of turn back and forth, sort of, you know, looking for the average. <laughs> Tell me more about you don't feel like you're in control. I mean, I feel like it's going all over the place and unless I had you by my side and you were telling me exactly what to look at, I wouldn't know. Sort of like when you have an employee who for some reason or another gives you an excuse about why something can't be done. You're yeah. like, no, no, you're gonna like get it done, right? Yeah. You're gonna make it happen. Okay, so I've kind of seen what I need to see here at this point and I decide to go out to the practice area to work on some skill building exercises. No, St. Carlos Tower, 520 Foxtrot, uh, Request a Hillsdale departure for the practice area. We'd like, we'll, we'll be back in 15 or 20 minutes. 
You know, this is what I would call a gym day, right? These are not on the ACS. They are in our ground school app, but they're not on the ACS. These are important fundamental skills that pilots need to have to have success on the other maneuvers that you do find on the ACS. Sometimes I think of this a little bit like tacking a sailboat, if anyone can follow that analogy, right? It, it may seem like you're going the wrong direction for a day or two, but it's only because when you do turn on course, you're gonna be moving that much faster. The two things that you and I are gonna to do today are in the app on the flight side. Yep. So just, I'll tell you what they are afterwards, yep. but um, if you wanna show them to your instructor or if you wanna just review them in the app when we're done, you'll yep. recognize what we're about to do. There you go, keep going, 2,500, it'll be good. All right, can I just take the plane for a minute? Sure. I, I just wanna show you what we're gonna do and the point of what we're doing here is to get you comfortable with the plane. So let me just clear the area a little bit. Um, the first thing is called coordination rolls, and the second okay. thing would be stall exercises. Um, the coordination rolls, I think, are gonna apply most directly to your landings, but the stall exercises are also great just for building confidence. And both things happen at minimum controllable airspeed, basically, so we just get as slow as we can. So we're 2,500, we just cleared the area. I just go power to idle and try to get slow until I hear a stall horn. And then we're gonna get comfortable just sort of flying around there. The reason we go slow for coordination rolls is because you can't really feel coordination in these planes unless you're slow. So when we get something like this here. Okay, so hopefully you've lost your forward view. Yep. You're right here in the Lindbergh reference. And you can see that if I let go of the right rudder, what happens? So close to the back. Good, so will you do that? So I'm, you just have the rudders, okay? Yep. All right, you got the rudders. Stop that yacht, there you go. And you know where you're looking for that data now, right? Yep. And there's nothing wrong with flying around right here. We don't even really hear the stall horn yet. Yep. Good, and if you were to stall right now, you know from looking at your Lindbergh reference that you're not gonna spin or anything because you're not yawing. Yeah. Right, let go of the rudder again. That's what it looks like. Push the rudder to stop it. Good. So the idea is to kind of get comfortable with that, okay? All right, and then the other thing, the other part of this, I'll take the plane just for a moment, is to get used to manipulating it. Like on landing, I feel like you're being a little ginger. So um, I'm gonna give you a, a, a little warning here. I'm gonna roll kind of fast. Yep. This is gonna feel fast for you, but you can kind of roll that fast, okay? Yeah. That's how fast you can roll this plane, if yep. you want to. And if you don't use a rudder, it feels like this. Ugh, Ooh, okay. kind of weird, right? Yeah. And you feel, ah, I feel it in my left seat. You know, feel it in, well, there's the left side, yep. right? There's the right side. But the idea is to try to bring in the rudder to the extent that you need to, to keep that feeling down toward the floor. Okay. All right? And I want you to just experiment with that. Looking at your Lindbergh reference, take the rudder again from me. Yep. Good. You've got the airplane now, the whole thing. You can put your hands on the yoke. Um, just experiment with faster rolls. Doesn't have to be exactly as fast as I did it. I just wanted you to see what was possible. There you go. Back to the left. Good job. Good. Back to the right. Nice. Like, you're the boss. If the plane's going that way and you want to bring the wing up, bring the wing up. Okay. There you go. Good. So, and the idea behind doing this is I believe that in flying, it's all about trusting the airplane and trusting the engineering yep. and knowing the envelope, knowing what's possible, right? Like it feels like when you're coming into land, you're being a little bit uh, shy about making it happen. Okay. And what you can see here is that there's a lot more room for you to be uh, more aggressive and just okay. put it where you want it. Don't let the, I always say, don't let the horse eat grass, but don't let the plane fly you around, right? Okay. Okay, so we're doing all of this stuff to get him more confident controlling the airplane. Uh, we do these coordination exercises for a while, and then we move on to stall exercises, all designed to get him looking in the right spot, to get him looking at that Lindbergh reference, and really just give him the dexterity and the confidence of maneuvering the airplane a little bit more aggressively when we're away from the ground. Uh, for the sake of brevity here, I won't show you the entire lesson out there in the practice area, but do know that it is up on page Patreon, and quite honestly, I'm really working hard to keep this channel ad-free. There are a lot of brands that want us to do like 
cutaways and talk about the product and this kind of thing and I would really like to save you guys from that so if you would help me in that effort becoming a patron gives you bonus content and also helps me keep these videos ad free all right so after we do stall exercises and coordination exercises we start to work on power off approaches at altitude again to just get him comfortable we're away from the ground he doesn't have that ground shyness he can he can follow what I'm saying and work on what I'm doing right up here at altitude so the first thing is I demonstrate it and then we begin to work on it let's pretend we're in the traffic pattern yep. get off the rudders please there you go good all right so we're in the traffic pattern let's pick a runway I don't know. It'll be uh, whatever that is, 280. Okay, that's our runway, that, okay. free, that freeway over yep. there. So we're back in right traffic, but we're at altitude. And what we're going to do is fly power off approaches up here just to get comfortable with how it all works. So let's call this little horse stable the abeam position or okay. whatever, okay? So at the abeam position, we go power to idle, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, we go flaps 10. And we pitch for our down line of 85. Getting the nose down is critical. We yeah. want about that much, and that should be 85. Okay. Okay? That's like one fist for me. Okay, let's call it, uh, we turn base. When we go base inside the white arc, we go flaps 20, and we keep the nose down. And that should take about 10 knots off our speed. Something like that. When you just add the extra flaps, but keep the same picture. When we went back to the pattern and we tried to sew all these things together, it was like night and day. I could see the smile on his face. I could see the light bulbs going off. Um, there's actually a lot more to extract from this day with Prakash, and I will be publishing that here to YouTube. I'm also probably going to see him again, but this is an, I, this is an example of the, the kind of stuff that I do when I'm assessing a pilot and the kind of exercises that I would recommend doing uh, if you're not doing those already. And if you're a flight instructor, please become a part of our CFI club. It's totally free. We have monthly meetings where we talk as a group and try to improve our skills and you know just raise our game a bit. We often have DPEs pop in there and, and other folks. So remember, it's free to join. You also get our ground school app free as an instructor if you become a part of the CFI club. Also, for anybody out there, we do have an iPhone version of the ground school app now and a monthly subscription option. So if you have checked it out in the past and you could and get it because you you know didn't have an iPad or you didn't want to buy a year subscription uh, definitely check it out there's some really valuable stuff in there pretty much everything that I know I'm putting into that app that's going to be my legacy and uh, I will leave that for the world when I go <laughs> Also remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. AOPA is doing valuable work to protect your freedom to fly, and Pilot Protection Services is a great you know, card you can keep in your pocket. If you have certain issues, you can contact them and they have, you have a legal team uh, to help support you. Also, thanks to Bose and to the patrons, without that support, these videos would not be possible. They are truly helping us in our mission to put quality flight training content out there on the internet and keep it as ad-free as possible. Leave me a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you do get notified. Share far and wide with your friends. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. And until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.